Who does like the booking for Honey Creek and That's Canada mostly band? Sam. Um I mean the The drummer? No, the guitar player. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, the guitar player okay. Sam. Um I mean I've started doing some of it. Uh I did the glitch gum like weekenders that we just did. Uh but otherwise pretty much all Sam. Got you. Yeah. Nice. That's all in house. Like you don't have like a t- agent. We or, do not. If you yeah. know any, <laughs> let, no. me, let me know. <laughs> we'll get it going. But. That's like a something I've talked to a lot of people recently about, like um, specifically like New Ski or Holy Pinto and other mm-hmm. bands just doing like doing their own tours. It's like, how do you book these? And do you need like an agent or what does that really look like? And it yeah. doesn't seem like they're in Milwaukee if they're out mm-hmm. there. So it's like, I don't know, <laughs> it's kind of figuring that out as yeah. things go along. Yeah, but, that's fair. But are we, finding, if we started? Yeah, we we can, started? I can't oh, okay, just roll cool. into Hi. it. But <laughs> hello. Yeah, hello. This is Ellie, everybody. Hi, happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, stuck to have you. <laughs> um, so how's Cactus been lately? Cactus is good. Yeah. Cactus is fun. That's my... Uh, busy summer. Yeah, yeah, it has been a super busy summer. Most of our weekends have been kind of doubled up and doing like two Friday shows, like a matinee and a late show. Nice. Um, which Ooh. has been really nice, like Fridays and Saturdays, just having like a couple things going on and making yeah. it like a full night affair. Do you guys have like a Sunday matinee show to it all? Or we can, we have in the one. past, but yeah. we haven't really as much recently. I think we've been really focused on kind of doing the two night shows sure. just because that's... It's one of those, if it's a weekend and people are already there, it sort of incentivizes people to, to stay and, and yeah. experience maybe something they wouldn't have otherwise. Right. So that's I'm a super fun way to I'm a big fan get. of the matinee shows. Yeah. The matinee yeah. shows are sweet. Especially yeah. when it's when you can have it be all ages <clears throat> and you can get oh, a yeah. bunch of people that like you know are just like looking some for something to do. Older folk, too. Yeah. It's not too late. And right. then, yeah, so you can do stuff afterwards, too. Yeah. Especially if it's a Sunday or mm. a you know, on the weekend. Yeah, we typically don't do anything other than all ages stuff on Sundays, uh, just because that's like people want to go yeah. to bed. They yeah. got work in the morning. <laughs> makes sense, <laughs> makes sense. I was talking to Kelsey about, um, Kelsey was saying that you two wanted to start like uh, an artist workshop kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I kind of want to talk about that too. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Did it start up yet, or is it, it just hasn't still in the yet. works? No, we have a kind of a template of what we're doing, um, but it's going to be called Ground Level. It's a bunch of different just ways that like we think artists should be able to kind of market themselves or be able to understand what they're doing in a business sense. Um, I right. think a lot of people don't really understand the full gambit of royalty collection and and yep. things like sync licensing and using samples and clearing them and or making sample packs and and pushing uh-huh. those out and like what that entails um and that's something that i have a bit of knowledge on i mean yeah. that's like i you went to school for it right i went to school for yeah. songwriting yeah oh, i got cool. a okay. songwriting degree um but th- within that it was it was a lot of classes for business and and marketing and and understanding like especially as a songwriter like what is a performing rights organization what is like a distributor what is a like distribution deal what is a record deal all Mm -hmm. of that stuff and learning how to kind of advocate for yourself and negotiate when you're writing and working with other people Mm -hmm. um so we just wanted to make a free resource for Milwaukee yeah. people to totally. be able to kind of learn that stuff and have a better understanding of it. Literally. And it could just, you know, move into how to produce on your own or how to write songs or any of that stuff as well. But I think for right now, it's really focused on um, the business end. Right. Kelsey especially is, I think, wanting to lead um, workshops on negotiating for shows and, right. and understanding like what a good and maybe we were talking about a booking agent, like what a good deal in that department looks like, like mm-hmm. what a good deal when you're talking to someone who's going to represent you, what right. is that all about and what do you need to ask for? Right. No, that's all huge. Cause I, no one really tells you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. And there's yeah. a lot of, um, resources, especially with the internet, but mm-hmm. a lot of the time it feels really cut and dry. Like, especially I'm sure you feel this, you, you sort of watch those videos that try to tell you how to best promote yourself or 
do, like how to collect every bit of what you're doing or yeah and there's there's just a lot of info and they all kind of say these things but they don't give you a directive they're just mm -hmm. saying generally a lot of the time anyway um what you could do right um versus you know giving people the the actual tools yeah for especially it. on a local level too that's huge because it's you know it's like if you're speaking to a huge broad audience but you yeah. can literally be like go to this website and email this person or this is what to do exactly yeah um and i think it's it's something where it's nice to have a person in you know a, whether it's a zoom or or like a in-person setting to ask additional questions to because mm -hmm. once you get a cut and dry resource it often leads you down that rabbit hole of what what can I do with this? Even though I know it exists, right. what is there that I can actually, as a person, like apply yeah. to this? Right. And just having people there to talk about it. Like I don't claim to be an expert in a lot of things, but I, I do know a lot about that stuff. And I think it's it's nice to just share those resources, especially it's like, yeah, like you said, I went to school for this. So it's, yeah. I have stuff that maybe people who haven't gone to school don't know yet totally. and i'm able to tell them and i'm happy to, yeah. to share you the know? negotiating one is a really intimidating one to, yeah. uh, to do if you are the artist booking the show it's not like you have a yeah. middleman in between you and it's it's scary Kelsey is, it really uh put that in my brain for the first time too i mean yeah. i've always known the songwriting end of it uh but i i didn't really know what to say or what the like proper way to say it was to someone who I'm trying to book a show with in Ohio or something. Right. And I, I need to, you know, ask them in a way that doesn't seem too pushy, but also, you know, is advocating for the art and the thing that right. we're doing and totally. being realistic, like what is a realistic expectation versus what is not and mm -hmm. when to kind of be able to spot when something might be a little more sketchy Right. than what you want to be a part of, you right. know? Right. That's, that's stuff that I didn't really consider. Um, I was just more gung-ho, let's play a show. I love music. Yeah. Uh, and I still feel that way a lot of the time, but Kelsey definitely uh, made me think about it more yeah. and be like, yeah, that's right. weird, actually, that we're only getting like $80 to play a sold-out show or, you right. know, the... I, I had some examples from the tour even that I booked where we got a deal that seemed incredibly good. And then yeah. in person, they shorted it. And it was mm. very obvious. And I had to sort of come back and say, hey, this is the email that has the deal in it. Um, you didn't deliver. And yeah. I, it's it's very easy to tell. You, didn't, you weren't able to supply a headcount. You weren't able to let me count the money with you or understand what we're sure. doing. You just said, this right. is what you're getting paid. And it was an astronomically no low amount yeah. for the amount of people that were there. And knowing the deal, it was nice to be able to say, hey, this is what I was expecting. And mm -hmm. I need some clarification on what happened here. And they ended up giving us more money Sweet. because it was, like I said, kind of obvious yeah. that within the terms of the deal that they sent, it wasn't right. Right. But I and I feel in their minds that they're not expecting the artist to really even For realize sure. that, you know, and they, how many times has that have they gotten away with right. it and yeah. Yeah, I Dang. think a lot of I think a lot of people just expect especially when they don't know at this level that that I think we're at like they don't always know you're a touring act. They they could just be doing local shows most mm. nights of the week and they don't really understand what a touring act is looking at versus a local act and mm. they think they can get away with doing the same thing they do for local acts who maybe don't ask those questions. Right. And yeah, it's nice to be able to advocate and say, so Hey, I know. In situations <laughs> like that too, like even before you play a show, um, is it in the, like the, whoever's booking the show as the artist, like, is it in their best interest to maybe just email um, ahead of time and just ask for that advance if there yeah. is no one pr not one provided just definitely yeah that sounds <laughs> as yeah. I'm saying I'm like why wouldn't 1, you 1000% <laughs> and yeah. I think a lot of people get scared because money is scary to talk about you don't want to scare them away from hosting you yeah. by first asking the question of what does the pay structure look like mm -hmm. um, 
But it's just as simple as that. And you can make a decision from there. Just, hey, what is the actual pay structure here? Can you send me an offer? Um, can I just know what I'm signing on the dotted line for, kind of? And mm -hmm. if, if you go through with it, then you at least know. Right. But otherwise, you just go in blind yeah, and you like, hope oh, and you're maybe, like maybe i'll get like, enough money to yeah. get gas to go to the next city or totally. maybe i won't right, right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> maybe we'll make i mean it, that's maybe we'll that's want. definitely why people push merch so hard is because they often i think like understand that that might be the thing getting them net to the next place but if yeah. you know going in what um what you're getting yeah then it is also nice to be able to say well even if we don't sell merch, which is always a question mark to entirely new audiences, totally. I know that I'm going to get this amount of money or I at least this, or... this percentage. And yeah. depending on how many people show up, I can sort of tell what that's supposed to be. Right. <laughs> Instead of going in blind, yeah. which would be so nice to have a manager to do that for you. But, for sure. Um, it's also kind of part of the, the fun, I guess, as, a, or I guess as an independent artist until maybe one day you're done. Or I guess that's just what in my mind. Um, oh, trust yeah, me. If I had someone else job. doing it for us, <laughs> if we had someone else doing it for us, oof, game changer. Yeah. Game changer, for sure. It would be awesome. But also, yeah. then on the other end, you got to know what that person's doing for you and right. what that costs and what that is and... It's nice to know you have someone you can trust, totally. but also at the same time, I think a lot of people are willing to just say, that person said I'm interested, and so I'm jumping at the opportunity, and I have no idea what I'm getting into, but right. I'm going to say yes, right. and that is a really scary thing to sure. do, yeah. and that's, yeah, that's ground level, that's why we're doing it, I think it's just going to help yeah, people... Right know what <laughs> they're getting into a little more because otherwise uh there like you said there's no rule book there's yeah. no website you can go to that says this is what a uh, booking agent uh deal or structure looks like usually this is what mm -hmm. that might be uh this is yep. what management costs yep yep and how to read offer sheets uh, kelsey yep. went through one with me and i was like wow i yeah. actually had no idea how oh to yeah I was a, a <laughs> DIY baby. I I don't know. I still am. Yeah, like, I yeah. didn't ever look at an offer sheet <laughs> in my whole life. I had no idea how to read them or write them. Uh, yeah. Kelsey taught me everything yeah. I know in that department and really invested the time into mm -hmm. me uh, knowing what to do in yeah. that world. And I'm right. forever grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. I'm still figuring it out, but um, I, know it's nice we'll I know it's nice <laughs> to know that there's contacts out there. So ground, yeah. groundbreaking. Ground level. Ground level. Oh, my God. So close. Ground level. <laughs> um, when is that going to be? Do you have a date on that yet or anything? Should like be that? sometime in the next year. It's so, part of the nonprofit, <sighs> which is kind of the oh, main yeah, yeah. focus right now um, within the whole structure of cactus and what we're doing i mean obviously we're still booking shows and doing shows and yep. that's going to continue happening but for right now it's just about getting that off the ground and yep. making things more accessible um whether that's like recording and pushing shows whether that's like adding in a ramp in the front of the venue right, and like right. trying to make the space more accommodating to people and yeah i mean that's kind of the main thing right now that's yep. taking up a lot of the so the there's energy. future renovations at cactus club right is, that is the goal is there yeah. any update on that because last i spoke with kelsey it was kind of still in like yeah just the early stages it's definitely still in the early stages okay. uh, i think further than it was when you talked to kelsey because i did watch yeah. that uh little interview as well yeah. and and i think at that point like they were just starting to uh, talk to people about what that might look like and I think now we kind of know what that might look like and we just gotta she, I mean th that's yeah. not my world as much as it's Kelsey's right. I think a lot of the job I currently have is <laughs> so Kelsey can focus on sure. that because otherwise like having her do the stuff that I often or Enzo or Mitch or the other people on the cactus mm -hmm. production team end up doing um having her do that stuff would really take away from that actually yeah. happening. Yeah. So um, I know less than some, yep, but yep, I also yep. will say it's definitely happening. And I know there's going to be some sort of efforts for fundraising and, and trying to get people to, cool. you know, maybe go to like a benefit show or, or yep. do things to help make that vision become a reality. Yeah. 
Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I'm excited for the new uh, Cactus Club. Yeah. Even though, uh, much love for how it is right now, but, yeah. you know, the future looks bright. It does. Sure. It really does. I think, like, that's probably... When I moved back to Milwaukee, I didn't really know what I was going to do with a music degree. Uh -huh. um, I knew I was going to be in Honey Creek, but I wanted to use that. And I think that Cactus is probably the biggest uh, win of my life, for lack uh, of a better yeah. term. I'm, I'm like, I'm blessed. I don't know. Yeah. But that's yeah. like the, I think having that job was really the thing that made me re-examine my feelings and thoughts about living in Wisconsin mm. and if I could work as a as a person in the arts and music here. And, totally. and I'm so, so grateful yeah. to have that spot. I'm sure they're flexible with your future tours and everything too, which is freaking sweet. Yeah. Um, which you're going on tour in October with Honey Creek. Yes. That we were talking about October before. 4th through the 15th. 4th through the 15th. 4th through the 15th. Nice. I had to think about it. Nice. But that's Hell yeah. Is. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have done so many tours in the past, True. I guess. Like, what number tour is this? <laughs> I have no idea. Last, yeah. the first year, I think, or 2022, 20, uh, I think I went on a tour every other month, whether that was with Honey Whoa. Creek or with a different project. Yeah. Uh, I was out there the i road. definitely did the full u.s circled a few wow. times which is crazy have but you how many u.s states have you visited would you i say? did the i did one of those um fill in the blank things the other day and yeah. i think was I've, it on facebook uh it was on okay. twitter okay x. yeah uh, I, I, oh sure okay <laughs> i saw something on facebook where it was like put an x where uh uh, each state that you've spent the night in. Yeah, it was, was like, it, it was like, have you stayed the night? Have yeah. you lived here? Um, I think I've been to 48 of 50. Wow. I think I've missed Alaska and Hawaii so sure. far, but that's... Rightfully, that's... <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's freaking sweet. Yeah, at least like driven through or stopped at a gas station or something in yeah. every, every like continental state. Yeah, I uh, think if you just exist in a state that, that counts as visiting it, you know, yeah. just being yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, state line. I know the vibe of safety I felt in like Missouri to the point of like when I stopped at a gas station once, I was like, I don't need to see anything else. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm good. St. Louis is great though. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll be yeah. in St. Louis on the 23rd, so for the first time ever, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for St. Louis. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I think I think just exploring and discovering new places is is really tight. There's some oh, yeah. like obviously, when you go in circles around the U.S. for like more than half a year, <laughs> you're gonna run into some weird shit. Yeah. But generally speaking, so fun. Yeah, which is exciting. <laughs> it's all about the adventure. Right, right. This, this last weekend, I was super freaking pumped coming off of our little run we did um well i played a show in milwaukee at wannabe cafe just like a solo set and then a solo set in appleton and then we did full band in lacrosse in minneapolis and just like even those two uh like going lacrosse in minneapolis just those two shows just with the van packed and just like um staying at people's houses and their living rooms like it got me so excited for this future tour that yeah. we're going on so yeah you were like i'm, I'm doing it i'm, I'm, I'm ready. out here i'm freaking ready did you play the warehouse in the uh, cross where did you play in the cross no we did popcorn tavern popcorn tavern okay yeah. all right it's like uh supposedly the only bar in maybe not wisconsin but for sure lacrosse where you can just openly smoke a joint just, oh. and they don't even care hell yeah which no one told all me right. that before <laughs> playing and all of a sudden like um just start smelling uh weed just, weed. just like whoa <laughs> like the green room door was open so we're like oh damn that's like pretty strong but right. whatever and yeah somebody's smoking and something all of a sudden crazy. like <laughs> my friends who we were staying with were there and they're like yeah we rolled a joint and i was like hell yeah that's like um so they're were, they were like you want to smoke it and i was like i'll have a little bit like afterwards and they're like, oh, we'll smoke it right here. And we we're like literally right in front of the stage. And I was like, really? And then they're like, yeah, you can do that here. And it's like sparked no up. No one cares. And then the band playing last, they were just passing if around a, a cop, joint. you're a cop, they care. Yeah, yeah. yeah they probably <laughs> if care, you're a cop, they care a lot. it's a known but... thing at this bar. <laughs> so that was really cool. So, uh, we're like calling them so to weird. the bar. Like... <laughs> <laughs> get them shut oh, down on yeah, accident like, yeah. <laughs> they care a lot don't uh they yeah, don't yeah, let yeah. that happen yeah that was hypothetically so I'm told. that was a dream that i had the other night just yeah for the record yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, you played the warehouse you were saying in lacrosse? I've played the warehouse like probably eight times since I was 15 years old, which wow. is why I'm like, I, that's why I was like, wow. oh, the warehouse. Is what is the, the warehouse? Spot. The warehouse is like an all ages uh, <sighs> venue in lacrosse that doesn't sell alcohol at all it's like a dry bar and they sell like sodas and interesting fun stuff uh, for all ages shows and for yeah. people of all ages like who could drink too like they wanted to just be a sober spot to play music sure. but it's up these crazy stairs uh you go up like four flights of stairs and then it's this pretty big room yeah um, sounds great it's a, the right, owner the is really area. really nice i okay. can't remember his name off the top cool. off the top of my head but He's so, so kind. It's not a DIY space. It's like a normal, like, It's bar an independent venue. venue. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's an independent venue. They're part of, like, the Neva board. Um, I think they just got added, but. I just want to Google this. The warehouse. Oh, you had, you had notes for me. <laughs> These, this is my calendar. <laughs> oh, nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. Future stuff coming out. Lacrosse. I just want to see what it looks like. So yeah. I'm just curious what venue is. Whoa! This yeah, it's a really, it? really cool spot. Oh, sick. Definitely have to note this for next time. Wow. Warehouse, or uh, lacrosse. I don't know about you, but the, every time I've been there, and this was the second time I've been there, just the most random things happen, and just yeah. like the most random type of crowd usually. Um very strange but like awesome city i think that like they used to be so i mean because they're the middle point between minneapolis and milwaukee and madison and like that's kind of the the thing you just have to go through i think Mm -hmm. it used to be a lot more of a hub of like like this is where bands stop because it's in the middle like i Mm. i feel like if i recall i i don't know for sure but i believe like mcr and like those types of bands coming up like played the warehouse like sure. fallout boys probably played the warehouse sure. like like those types of bands that we all listened to yep. growing up like oh, have for yeah. sure <laughs> got like spun through That's that place sick. yeah but not, and like why not because you know it's, it is like a great in between if you do like yeah. madison then lacrosse and yep. then minneapolis like yeah. yeah that's a good run or for, for people sure. that can just do one you know like if you're on a on like a full u.s tour and you're you're trying to figure out like you've got your chicago date Uh and like maybe the radius clause like stops you from playing like milwaukee or something right but you also don't want to like leave those people hanging the the warehouse the sure right right totally i have heard uh talking with some people about like booking tours and just like the whole touring dynamic of everything Mm -hmm. like milwaukee tends to get missed on a lot of bigger tours because like chicago um, Madison is like more on the way to Minneapolis than Milwaukee is, yeah. and it's almost like kind of a, a weird direction to hit Milwaukee and then Minneapolis. Right. But I don't know. It's like dang. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess with. Um, and also, a lot of the the bigger packages are fully, um, like, playing cities that only have like in like non-independent venues like they're mm. the, you know like a lot of the tour packages will, will be kind of like gotcha, not right. bought but like like signed on to just play uh like live nation or Ticketmaster venues yep. which you know that's that's part that's of what factor. we do and like yeah i mean in milwaukee there isn't that um and that's intentional right by design totally. So, totally yeah i mean that's why you'll see a lot more stuff like coming through madison Mm. Uh, so and, yeah i don't know the so as far as like because i was talking a little bit about this with kelsey last podcast but as far as like the venues that are um i guess the um like owned by live nation or Ticketmaster, do they have like a clause or like something where there can't be any any independent venues in a city or is um, it just a certain size it really depends on the tour i've been on live nation tours uh i've i've like been on them whether that's like working or yeah. playing um and th- there are some stops that for instance if they really if you really need to route through a city and there's just absolutely nothing um i know that I've personally been on, like, what was a Live Nation Ticketmaster tour that has Uh stopped at, like, one or maybe two. But it's very intentionally trying to not. Um, And if at some time, at some points to the, like, you know, to the, uh, 
to harm the overall package. Right. <laughs> like, uh, like not, to benefit like, the, yeah, uh, the I was trying really tour. hard to think yeah, of a nice yeah. way to put that. But, but yeah, I mean, if you have to drive eight hours because there's not a venue that's on the, sure, the, the route in yeah. between that is able it to just be makes used, more sense. then you just got to go yeah. that whole distance. But they don't have something. something where it's like in oh. the city of Madison, there can't be any other independent there can't be any independent venues because they don't have that. However, it does become something like, for instance, in the case of Madison, um, they, they did go out to try to like acquire those venues. Uh, so they came in kind of like acquiring one and then it was eventually a thing of, of, Hey, you know, you're going to be better off if you join on to this because you're going to get more stuff and you're going to yeah. be able to do things better as a venue. Uh, it sounds like <laughs> like a <laughs> like a Star Wars movie or something. It's like, join us yeah. or we will destroy you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that is definitely part of it. And, and you know, it's it's also at the same time... Uh, my opinion is is no shame to the artists or people that are are a part of it. You know, it's just that is the music industry. Yeah. Like that is that is full out, you know, the same as signing a deal. Um, it's kind of it feels like sometimes a risk where you go, mm. what is the cost reward over right. if this goes wrong? Um, what am I left with? Right. Or like what is the next step for me? Um, it's the same. It's it's definitely you know, uh-huh. hey, am I going to go on this tour? What does the, you know, it's it's all about the same thing we were talking about. It's it's just knowing what you're signing up for and deciding if that's best for you or not in that right. moment. And and yep. that's, there's a lot of options. Um, yep. Sometimes people have less options based on choices that they've made previously. Mm-hmm. Um, that is part of any industry. Like if, you know, you're, you're kind of, making decisions that affect outcomes, you know, yeah, butterfly totally. effects type thing. Right. So, right. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I had no disrespect or anything towards, towards people that choose to go that route. It is mm-hmm. just, that is a fact of it. Yeah. Uh, and we've done, um, we played the high noon and majestic and every time mm-hmm. I'm blown away about how like nice everybody is. Oh, All the employees sure. are freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, and they're really upfront about the deals at the end of the night too. They yep. bring you into the office and just, show you everything and really break it down which as an artist like yeah fuck yeah yeah, that's awesome and that's awesome like yeah when we've played high noon as well like you know i'm fully aware that that is what that is like Mm -hmm. it's it's always been a good night you know and that's that's the thing like yeah if you're uh i think that's kind of more the message behind Uh, a lot of artists that are actively fighting against those companies is like, if you are an artist, no matter what you will encounter Mm. this, Um, whether that's to your benefit or not, that is like a monopoly type system that stops you from having other options. Mm. Um, And that is kind of, I think the core of the issue, because yeah, like you said, if you want to play Madison, the majority of the options are, are that. Yeah. Um, and most of us, myself included, would love to play as many shows in Madison right. as I can. Right. You know, I, I have a good time there. Definitely. So. Shout out to Rigby, though. I love yeah. the Rigby. Yeah, Rigby's cool. <laughs> Rigby's super cool. One of my favorite spots in Madison, for <laughs> sure. And we've only played the basement, which I freaking love the basement yeah. there. Dylan cause... broke his leg there. No way. Yeah, we did, he went to the hospital. after, <laughs> no like Like, in way. the middle of our set. Like he, he like hyper extended. Or so, no, he like kicked up and his leg like gave out and he just oh fell no. to the ground. And, uh, like just mid set. Yeah, yeah. He kept playing, <laughs> just sitting down and then went to the hospital. Uh, he broke his leg. It was, I don't a, think it was broken. It okay. was like, ex- it was like really pulled. Like we thought yeah. it was like hyper extended, but, ah, but he couldn't walk. Not. He couldn't stand on it yeah. at all. No. <laughs> that was a night. <laughs> that was yeah, a night for sure. For sure. <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, how's Dylan doing? I haven't seen him in a minute. Dylan's good. Yeah, Dylan's, Dylan's good. good. I think the band is good. Good. Yeah, yeah y'all all just moved out of the, the same house recently. Yeah, yeah. No, we were all kinda... in different places, doing yeah. different stuff, but it's coming together every week, you know? Nice, nice. Yeah. Where do you practice? I think I asked you this last time I we saw We practice you, uh, at um, Neverland Guy. Uh, oh, the what? dude that owns the the ring, uh, the, he has another space. It's in Select Sounds. 
Okay. In Milwaukee yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's hard to find the practice spaces, so it's always interesting asking bands where they <laughs> practice. Yeah, it's definitely the we we are glad we found a place, especially so quickly. However, it's it is with six people really small and very yeah, hard to like, like navigate correctly. Like we had a system in the basement. I don't yeah, I don't know how y'all now. did the basement. The that the, was so much comfier than this, but also sure. we had meeting spaces. We were able to kind of like leave that and go upstairs oh, sure, and write right. music or whatever yeah. else. Versus now we're kind of sitting in a hallway, sure. uh, trying to figure everything Get out. A comfy. <laughs> yeah. Everything's very public. Like if something goes wrong, we're just like in the <laughs> middle of everything, it's and like no anyone escape. can hear it or walk out and see it. Like it's yep. it's very uh, <laughs> very odd versus just being in your home in your own for, for yeah. several years <laughs> it's like. probably weird to get used to for yeah. sure yeah yeah appreciate y'all for letting us practice in your basement that one time yeah because that was that was really fun. helpful <laughs> i think that was the first time you and i met no it was probably in that basement yeah no i think so I think we've met before that, but I, that you could very. <laughs> it was well a while right. ago. At this yeah. point, it was it was quite a while ago. Yeah, like, yep. I yeah. I think we knew maybe of each other online for a while, and then that might be true. Yeah. I think I think that might be more likely because I I also while I was in Honey Creek for a time lived in Boston, so it going was to like school knew, out there. Yeah. What do you think about Boston? I love Boston. Yeah. Uh, I I definitely like don't think I'd ever move back. Mm-hmm. Um, you were there for four years? No, so I did a year in Spain. I did a year Sweet. in Valencia. That's where I started school. Um, I actually, so I, I went to Berkeley and I applied, like, kind of not thinking I'd get in. Yeah. Um, so I said yes to everything on the application. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the questions was, do you want to move to Spain for a year? And I just said yes, because yeah, I was like, I don't really think that this is an option for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really believe in myself that hard. And I went to the interview and I went to the audition and they told me I got in like right there. Wow. Um, and they asked me like, what do you like about the idea of going to Spain? And I was like, I always feel really inspired <laughs> when I travel. And that's all I said. I was like, I don't really have a, a reason. I was like, yeah, I'm going like, to okay. be really inspired. <laughs> <laughs> and they just sent me there for a year Yo. so but it was kind of sick it was cheaper than the boston oh, sure. tuition actually it was like yeah. cheaper living and cheaper so was that um, your first year then you just yeah. started in spain yeah. first year Gnarly. full year in Gnarly. valencia spain and then i did i graduated in two years after so i did three years wow. and i graduated um nice i did because yeah a lot of that was covid i was gonna tr- oh, like yeah, yeah. sort of take a break when i joined honey creek officially um and then COVID happened. And so I did the remaining six semesters in two years, mostly online. Fuck. But, yeah. Oh, shit. Wait, six semesters in two years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah you cranked it up. Yeah, just like summer, summer fall, spring, summer, fall, spring. Yeah. Uh, was there anything. any just reason you just wanted to get school done with? Or? My thing was once I finished this, if the world is back to normal, because that was kind of my guesstimate. Yeah. Um, when things were starting to go down, I was feeling like I shouldn't take a pause because maybe I could sort of time it right and leave with a degree and then be able to tour full time if I wanted to right. and just immediately go into working in music. Yeah. And so that was kind of the goal was I sort of used that as budgeted time in a way and tried to like yeah. really game it and make it totally finished by the time it was done. And yeah, I, I did. Um, yeah. It lined up Fuck pretty perfectly. Yeah. Like we finished it or I finished it in August of 2021. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we went on the first like short little couple dates, like testing the waters in like early November, yeah. uh, 2021. Yeah, yeah. Like, Fuck yeah. So, so it did yeah. exactly what you, yeah, you it worked out. That. It worked yeah, perfectly. Yeah. And then I spent the entire next year on the road. Sick. And it felt really good. Sick. Like, it felt like I accomplished something that I never thought I would. Yep. And I definitely never thought I'd go to college anyway. Uh-huh. So having a very untraditional, weird sort of experience yeah, right. was totally <laughs> fine for me. Totally. And then yeah. you moved back to Milwaukee right after and then I did. hit the road? Okay. Yeah, I did. I was initially considering moving to... I had, like, briefly been in New York and I wanted to move back. 
Uh, Mm -hmm. And then I also wanted to move to L.A. to just do the songwriter thing right away, but the band felt like it was doing well, and I wanted to tour, so I moved back here instead. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's also a very optimistic way to approach, like, COVID around that time, too, because sometimes, I mean, I kept hearing, like, things, uh, like, um, how you were thinking, like, use this time to your advantage and really, like, kind of, this is the time to hunker down and... um, like work and then once it's all over it's you can blossom so i applaud you for that that was thank really, you. that's really sweet thank you yeah um, i feel like the structure was nice yeah uh, i think that if i didn't have it i would have for sure mm. floated into kind of a i want to do this but i'm not doing it because i don't have to and the world is ending and just right. having that structure uh to have something to work towards regardless and kind yep. of like push that mentally to the side while I stayed inside and ordered my groceries yep. Uh, yep. to my door. Like that was nice. Definitely was a scary easy. time too though. Cause you could, a uh, like, moment there's, I think it was maybe in everyone, the back of everyone's mind, just like, wow, this, the world could very much fall yeah. apart. Um, and yeah. it still can. But. It can. You're right. You're you know? so right. Yeah. Nothing is uh, for sure. Yeah. At all. It's weird to even uh, sometimes uh, like look back at like 2020, 2021 now because it feels like we're so much removed a little bit, but yeah. also there's remnants of that time period in our day to day. But yeah, it's really. Um, I kinda, think it kinda... taught me how to stay inside. I was such a. Hmm. I mean, I didn't. I didn't really live in a city growing up. Like I, I was always Milwaukee adjacent. I knew most sure. people here, but I was like an hour away each sure. direction uh just kind of driving out for diy shows whenever i could like yeah. pretty much every night of the week because i didn't want to be in my small town sure uh and i was always like i'm not comfortable in my own space so i need to go somewhere else and that like stuck with me from the time i got a driver's license to uh well within college wow. and like i was i was fully out there in like 2019 2020 like just, just thinking if I if I stay inside and just do work and like sit with myself I'm wasting a day sure and then when I was in that situation that yep. everybody else was I that was my first time being like wow I'm actually really really comfortable with myself and like I'm able to like make stuff and do things Fuck for yeah. me and really think yeah so that was actually really nice it completely changed the way i have lived since because now it's it doesn't feel like i'm always rushing to do something just slowing down a little bit totally yeah totally yeah yeah freaking COVID, i tell you yeah wild times the good and the bad but yeah i was also going to school full-time doing this band and working three jobs Jesus so, Christ. Yeah. Wait, say that one more time. You're I was going to school full time, working yeah. three jobs and doing this thing. Holy shit. That was shit. my my experience. Yeah. What jobs were you working? Uh I was a like student uh ambassador, yeah. advisor person. Uh I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I worked yeah. for the school. Yep. I worked for Berkeley. I was just uh like a desk person and like a background work person, Mm -hmm. um, like kind of work study type thing. And then I also had a job, uh, I got a minor in theater, like musical theater. Oh, sure. And, uh, I got hired on to like read the musical theater writing department's sheet music and like record, uh, their pieces. So they would send me their sheet music and I'd sight read it. And then I'd act and do like the voice acting thing. And and I just record it all myself, um, do like a little mix down and, and send it back. Uh, so I was usually doing that from like 11 AM to 11 PM to like 2 AM. That was my window for that. Before that I'd go to work, I'd go to school from like 8 AM to like 3 PM. And then in that window, I had an internship at a label in California, in L.A. Um, so I was doing uh, social media, like sync marketing, uh, or like sync for a sync company. That's yeah. the way to put it. Wow. And that was oh really cool. Uh, and I Grinding. wanted to. Yeah, I, was, I was really, I was really <laughs> doing the most. Yeah. I don't think, I, th- I don't think there was a day for a full year where I didn't wake up at 7.30 pour a big cup of coffee, uh, fall asleep in my bathtub, and then immediately work until 2 or 3 in the morning and then do it again. Yeah. 
Uh, Have you always been like a crazy ambitious person? I don't know. <laughs> it it comes in phases. Sure, it comes yeah. in phases for sure. Like yeah. I think that really uh by the end of it I I felt confused when I had a break. Mm. Like when I had like moments to breathe <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like like once I was right. done with that part, I was uh very confused when I just had to show up to work and punch in and punch out and yeah. then do whatever. Right. Uh, so I think, yeah, kind of, but also I definitely, the way everybody does get super burnt out yeah. and, uh, need to take, you know, moments. Yep. Yep. Nice. As far as your, um, like with Honey Creek and like y'all, are y'all assigned to like any label? I think y'all have like the DGO. D uh, we're on Thumbs label. Up Records. Thumbs Up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we're on the, on the Who Thumbs else Up is on roster. there? I, um, uh, it's us, remember seeing Garden there. Home, Tiny Garden Voices, Home, yeah. Amway. Um, those are the, the local reps. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, there's a good amount of really, really sick bands yeah. on there. Um, Brady does a great job. They're really cool. Sick. Uh, are they, they based out in Wisconsin? It. They are again now. They were okay. living with us in... Uh, the house we were in together for oh. like the first couple years that I moved back here. And then cool. they moved to Duluth, Minnesota for a minute. And then they okay. just moved back okay. to Milwaukee. Um, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Uh, what is like a benefit to being signed to uh, a label and they're, they're independent. Yeah. Like independent yeah. That's, label. that's an indie um, through and through. Honestly, the biggest thing is just support for trying to, pay for physical uh items like like cds and vinyl and tapes and that's kind of brady's sure. core um thing that they do yeah and just having somebody else there to help promote it and make um decisions around it i, sure. I think that that yeah that's just like a nice resource to have yeah yeah, yeah. i mean if we need if we do have a question or if we need something he's you know they're a friend so yeah it's totally. it's a lot of just hey you right. can hit them up anytime yeah which i feel like that's if i ever kind of go to um a direction of um signing with the label i definitely just want to be like best friends with the person at the end of yeah. the day too or just like that's really a know them way to do you it. know yeah <laughs> like i feel like i don't want to force anything but when it feels right it feels right but right. i've always been confused about that like kind of just navigating the whole music thing of like, do you really need a label and like, what are the benefits? But you definitely like you now can... don't. Um, I mean, you may receive a lot of really good benefits from one, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, not a requirement yeah. by any means. I mean, I think a lot of your sort of journey as an artist is very representative of that. You know, you're playing stages and doing things that mm. a lot of artists who are signed are not doing or you know are trying to do mm. and you're doing that independent and i think that that is something that you know a lot of people right now almost like don't know if is the right call but i think like it is and i, mm. I it can be um for a lot of people everybody's situation yeah. is super different totally. but i think that like <clears throat> doing what feels right and understanding the mold that you're fitting yourself into by doing it yeah uh, is really really uh different for everybody but important. yeah and i think that you're doing a great job uh and i think if you sign to a label you'd also probably do a great job thank you <laughs> uh yeah but Appreciate it's just that. it's just really about uh what yeah. they're offering you and knowing uh, you know, it's a business. It's yeah. a business uh, negotiation transaction, I guess. Yep, yep. <laughs> at that point, at that point. Yep. Um, so, just a transition to um, what is Honey Creek's like uh, foreseeable uh, future? With like, we're talking a little bit about like future releases and stuff, and the yeah. tour. Um, what's yeah. going on? Well, we're playing Bayview Bash on September sixteenth. I, I don't know saw if this will that be just out, got announced uh, by yeah. by then or not. Wait, what day? September 16th, next Saturday. Yeah, it'll be out by cool. then. The All clips right. might be a little bit delayed, but the uh, podcast will be out there. That's totally fine. <laughs> Sick. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's we're a whole doing festival. That. Uh, we're doing the, we're on the X-ray stage for that. We're the last act of the night. And um, Bayview Bash? Yeah. Okay. So is that on like KK or is that? 
Uh, it's Kinnikinnick and some other street. Okay. Somewhere in that area. But like right yeah. by in the Bayview. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the flyer. I uh, saw someone post it today. Yeah, someone yeah. posted it today. It looks really fun. Yeah. Yeah. What time slot? 8 p.m. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. But uh, we're that's, doing that. That's the next local show? That's the next local show. Uh, and then we are on tour in October. Like I said, October 4th? Through yep, the 15th, the I think. 15th. Awesome. But Which show or city are you most excited for on that? I am always really, really excited to play New York, but this time sure. I'm really excited to play Focella in Oh, sure. Ohio, yeah. In dope, yeah. dope. I mean, that's just going to be like a homey like reunion. Like, it sounds like it talking with like. Dylan, too. Y'all know a lot of people in Ohio. For sure. Yeah. And a lot of those bands are, are people that we talk to and interact with or have played some shows with before. Sure. Um, Sweet. Just a so, big reunion, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Fun. We're just going to hang out. It's going to be sick. <clears throat> yeah. I'm very, very excited for that. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Otherwise... Which venues have you all played in New York? I'm curious. Uh, more in Manhattan or Brooklyn? My, or? The one that sticks out in my brain is Mercury Lounge. Oh, wow. That one's, yeah, I've seen that, that one. That one's yeah. the one that I'm the most excited about. I mean, that one, when I was like living staying in new york uh i was like a few blocks away from it and i'd pass it walking dogs for wag that was a job i had for a while was walking dogs for wag just trying to make any money i could in new york city yep uh and i'd always walk by it and i was always really wanting to play it i I just felt like that would be like a someday thing and then we got to on the uh, mom rock tour we did last March Fuck yeah. and that was really cool and the show was Sick. like pretty pretty full and Hell right yeah. before us the early show similar to what Cactus does yep. they have early and late shows and the early show was <clears throat> Gatlin if you know I don't Gatlin know them is. but she is like a full on pop star baby oh she's hell yeah. like a, <laughs> she's like yeah, she went out on tour with Pale Waves right after. Okay. Um, just, yeah, I'm a huge fan of sick, her music. Sick. And that was so cool. Did you meet her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were hanging in the nice, green room for nice. most of the night. She was really, really nice. Dope. And it, it just felt so good. And I didn't know uh, who she was at the time. And, and then, like, I ended up falling completely in love with her Fuck, music. Fuck, yeah. That's, again, that's that's the benefit <laughs> of those double shows. I, I yeah, left right. being, like, a fan. A I left, crossover? like, really enjoying it. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. Especially if like a bill or like an artist that you normally wouldn't get to um, share the night with. For sure. You know. Yeah. That was a that was a rare meeting. Yeah. And it felt real good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> is is Mercury Lounge um, in Manhattan or is that Brooklyn? That's in Manhattan, Manhattan or that's like in the East Village. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm like slowly getting an idea of New York together. Um, I was there two weeks two weekends ago, mm-hmm. and um, just walked around and it was awesome i just was staying in uh, like east village manhattan area and like now i finally have an idea of like where brooklyn is queens manhattan yeah. and like the Do you, whole can you out. navigate the the subways no i didn't even oh, dare shit. i was alone you know, i was alone mean? i was alone they're so easy <laughs> they're so easy i heard yeah i heard you can just pop, pay there pop your phone open <laughs> and put in transit directions and it'll i was only you, there like, for like 24 hours yeah. so i was like I don't want to I, 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 I love I, I love the New York transit system. Sweet. I want a subway Sweet. in my life. Like that is like <laughs> half the reason why I really was like, wow, I want to live yeah. somewhere where I do not have a car. Zero sure. car. <laughs> Are there just do the subways go like under the river or the um, or do they just cross over the bridge? Uh, typically, they cross over the okay. bridge. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, in my brain, I don't think there are ones that go underneath, but I could be okay. like, super wrong. Random question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the su- like subway itself, at least, okay. not on like the lines going out to like New Jersey and like. Philly yeah. And okay. That, Got you. Yeah, New York is freaking sweet. We're playing in East Village at the Rockwood Music Hall. Oh, okay. Um, Word. Which I'm really, really excited for that one. And yeah have a lot of new york homies to come through hell it's yeah be fun gonna be fun hell yeah um yeah and east village is a really cool like uppity like area it seems um yeah. I, I mean that's kind of the home of nyu that's like oh the, yeah that is yeah, yeah yeah like, like washington that park area. too yeah. So I walked over by Washington Park because yeah. uh, someone was like, you got to go to Washington Park. And I walked up there and I was like, oh, it's literally the 
thing with the arch. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I've seen this Hang in so many movies. Hang out there until that TikTok guy comes up and he's like, do you make music? And oh my can, God. You can go, yes, I, was, I do. I was literally thinking of that <laughs> same thing. I, was, yeah. I see his reels on Instagram. I see them on TikTok all the time. Wow. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I wonder if someone's going to ask if I make music because I did. <laughs> You're like sitting there waiting like, please ask For me about my, my music, <laughs> please. <laughs> was that, yeah, I like realized that that was the part that a lot of those videos are in. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like a big like destination for for, for that. It feels like it is. I don't know. Yeah, totally. it's a gathering place. It is a gathering place. There was this one guy standing there with a sign that was like, um, "Make me laugh, and I'll give you a thousand dollars." And there was a camera just pointed at him. But yeah. like we're all just like standing around and like some people are just cracking jokes. Or, <laughs> I don't know. It's just really funny, and the guys like. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I've heard that before. Yeah, that's a good one. You should have walked up and just been like, I need you to laugh. I'm on tour. I need you to help me right now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please laugh. Start, I'm so start broke. Him. I haven't eaten a real meal in four <laughs> days. I'm so broke. <laughs> laugh, motherfucker. <laughs> I've only been to gas stations for a month. <laughs> for real. I wonder what like does happen if there are any videos. I should have looked them up online. But oh, yeah. You should videos. find out. That's sick. Like, yeah, if if you're just in one. Yeah, no, yeah I, you should see for sure. Oh, no. or that like, would be my first yeah. thing. I'd go home like, I don't know. I want to know. Just like in the background, <laughs> waving. Yeah. Yeah. If you made the so cut. So funny. <laughs> it's a magical place. Uh, so you would move to, or you wanted to move to New York for a little bit? I did, maybe? yeah. No. Yeah, when I moved to Boston uh, formally, I that was like my uh, first major move and I fully moved like mm. everything out of my childhood bedroom and everything I owned was in Boston wow. and that was under the expectation that after Boston I was moving to New York oh. um, and then the longer I stayed the more I wanted to move to LA because it seemed like all my friends were and that was like kind of the opportunity spot for being a yeah. songwriter for you know a career um, yep. Yep. and I questioned that and then yeah, I joined this band formally. Yeah. How did you meet uh, Dylan and Chris and Honey Creek initially? Uh, Chris was in my high school band with nice. me. Nice. Uh, we started a band in high school uh, that was mostly just nice. me with an acoustic guitar at first. And then I was like, hey, you play guitar and you were in a different band with me. Uh, uh-huh. Do you want to play guitar in this band so I can just sing? Yeah. And we did that and it eventually came became a full band. Uh and our like biggest thing we did together was like go on one tour, and we played uh, Warp Tour. We played the oh, like we won the yeah. Ernie Ball thing and played the Marcus Amphitheater, um, which was tight. Yeah, uh, that was like my f- dream as a kid. And like once that happened, it was kind of like both simultaneously. Like I think I'm locked into music for the rest of my life. Like this is what like I want to do. The Marcus Amphitheater in Milwaukee at Summerfest. Yeah. You yeah. played on that yes. stage. What? Yeah, yeah we we what? played it. It was sick. As a local man? Uh, yeah, That's pretty much the best day of sick. my life when what? I was 19 and probably still till now. What? Uh, how, yeah. did, how did you <laughs> get that? What? Uh, it was the first year, so we did the Ernie Ball Battle of the Bands for sure, Warped right? Tour. Yeah. And it was the first year, one of two years, uh, where instead of having an all-local stage that was the Ernie Ball stage, they did a... One, a single slot per city on the main stage. Um, okay. And so that was the first year we did it, or they did it. And our band, like, somehow, I shouldn't say somehow, I, I kind of know how. I, I had, like, a YouTube side of things going on where I was, like, making videos and stuff. And I had, yeah. like, a somewhat of an audience. Uh, and I made this video that was like, go vote for us or whatever. Oh, um, and sure, I told all my yeah. friends and everything. And yep. we were number one nationally. Fucking like, which Christ, was dude. insane. It, <laughs> oh there were like thousands God. of bands. And we were just up there the whole time. And like my friends wow. were just constantly like posting like, this is so sick. Like, wow. like they're going to become number one. Like they, they became number one, yeah. like for our band. Like that was really, really <laughs> sick. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we won the date. Uh, and we played the Marcus Amphitheater, <laughs> and that was Sick. like the the thing. Yeah, insane. So and then I left uh, there, and I was like, I actually have. That was my only dream. <laughs> that was my only dream. That's where it ended. 
So yeah. what the fuck do I do? Right. I'm 19. That's the rest of my, what do I do with the rest of my life? I thought that would take 40 years. Uh, yeah, right. You, you think like normally. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, okay. then, uh, then I fucked around and made another, yeah, another like, band. Yeah, I do whatever the fuck I want to do now that I did that. Yeah, yeah uh, but sick. no, we, we ended up breaking up. Uh, that band broke up like maybe a year later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like, that was kind of when I went to school. Uh, yeah. and then when I was in school, Chris texted me when I was like in Spain, uh, and he said, do you, is it okay if I join another band? And I was like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, I, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, duh. And that band was Honey Creek. Sick. And we'd played a bunch of shows with Honey Creek and, yeah. um, had done stuff with them in the past. And then when I came back, uh, we were talking and Chris was initially like, Hey, do you want to go on tour with us to play guitar? And I was like, Fuck yeah. sure. And then that tour didn't happen. Uh, got canceled, but we uh-huh. ended up, I ended up writing a little over half of transit, yep. uh, with them, uh, because of that. And then yep. eventually we did go on a tour in January and then I formally joined, uh, on that tour. Sick. But. Sick. So going back to the amphitheater, though, <laughs> yeah, uh, you wanna? did you, was it a national <laughs> competition? It was. And then, but you played the Milwaukee amphitheater here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause it was, a, the well, tour they had, the, it tour. was like, a one band per every state that they had the tour going Got to you. one. And then it was like, uh, nice. okay. so like, and then from there they picked, uh, a band that they liked the most after seeing them to like win the ultimate prize, which was like a bunch of gear okay. and stuff. But for me, that was not the main objective. Yeah, right. The main objective was playing Warp <laughs> Tour. The main objective was like being on stage. And Fucking I mean, yeah, really. I, for everything that went down after that tour ended, that was for real the first thing I ever saw musically as a kid. Uh, I remember being in like seventh grade and sneaking there and seeing a bunch of my favorite bands. Mm-hmm. And I, it, for months afterwards, I was just like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Like every single person I talked to. Yeah. Um, I was, I was just so, people like stopped being my friend because I would like talk about music, only music all the time, like in like middle school and early high school. Like they were just like, I can't even be your friend because all you think about is how bad you want to play music. Wow. And I don't have anything to relate to you on. Do you believe that you've manifested (laughs) a lot of things just by constantly putting it out into the world? Kind of. For that one, that was the one where I just really feel like I that was just something I believed so hard that I was going to do. Yeah. Like Chris and I followed, uh, the tour for a little bit and like handed out CDs the year before sure. we played. Uh, we like would go out on the line of people and hand out free CDs to like everybody oh, and yeah. like play in the parking lot and stuff. Yep. And we just, I don't know. He was down to come along for the ride <laughs> in that, in that sense. Uh, but I mean, for me, that was just, a, a constant like I just I felt like that would help and yeah. I wanted to do it so bad that we just yeah. kept doing everything in our power to do that one thing almost and then it right. eventually happened it happened so, do you yeah. you're saying like after that it's like what do I do now do you have any crazy goals right now with Honey Creek as far as like um what you want that to look like in the next I, uh, I think few years? all of our goal all of our goals is to kind of have this be like a self-sustaining uh, band yeah and like just tour and do this and put out music sick and i i just feel like for me that also like as an on an individual level like that's just what i want for the rest of my life with music whether that mm-hmm. means that i'm doing jobs within music or making music or being a part of a band or, or whatever else i just want it to sustain my life right. like i don't want to do stuff that doesn't relate to it yeah. anymore um and it's it's awesome that i think i've found that in totally. a way totally so, oh yeah yeah With cactus club and yeah. honey cactus creek. and honey creek and music that i make on my <clears throat> own and music that i write for other people and with other people like yep i just have so many avenues Ooh, one to explore sorry <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one thing i want to talk about too um <laughs> so you said yeah you, you went to school for songwriting i did yeah um do you, how does that look like? Like, how do you become a songwriter for other musicians? Um, 
and how do like licensing deals might work or like how does that like what does that world look like because i've always thought about yeah. like it'd be cool to write a song for a band or somebody and um it could be way easier than i ever thought it was but i just don't know what it's, it it's it's pretty like. fundamentally easy yeah uh, <laughs> i mean it's um it's a lot of just personally i like to not talk money until after a song is written but mm. i seek out people and sometimes they seek me out whose music i like and whose music if they you know mess with what i'm doing then yeah. we work together um there's been like situations where like I put out a song uh, with this with an artist that I went to school with a few years ago, um, and like we wrote it for like a class project, and then it came out, and we like, you know, sh she texted us before releasing it and was like, "Hey, um, I'm gonna put out this song. How do we feel about these splits?" Uh, and then I get like, I think it's like 30% of the overall project. Uh, gotcha. That's through mechanical and like all that stuff it's through like my performing arts organization collects it so i'm on ascap and they collect both sides of that royalty pie like they collect the songwriting and the uh um distribution end of it and then so whoever submits it do they have to register you in ascap or bmi or can you just claim it yourself uh you can go either way with it so okay. like if if you uh if somebody puts a song in there and something's wrong uh, you can edit it like edit. you have, yeah, you have that you power. Have power but, to... but yeah, I mean, what they do is they go through and collect uh, royalties from like TV licensing and like radio stations. And uh, when you play a show at a bigger venue, you can submit your set list and they'll give you royalties. That's mm -hmm. why like a venue pays for a fee through ASCAP and BMI and all those places every year to, yep. to have something to pay you out with for your performance at that venue. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, so when I've written songs with other people, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also personally, I use this thing called Song Trust, which is mm, a, I've heard of uh, it. yeah, that, that collects the distribution. Uh, that's, that's more on like the, I don't know, publishing end of it. Um, so is that like just another outlet as far as like um, like you could have a because I have BMI um, and if I got Song Trust I'll get even more royalties that yeah so they they claim more royalties worldwide is kind of the okay. the thing there so they um, are just checking more closely and it's kind of like in a way signing on to. Uh, Obviously, with ASCAP and BMI, there's so, so many songwriters and people that are signed up for those. But this is like having an independent version of someone who's collecting those royalties on your behalf and like fighting for you. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like a more focused, like they're giving you a little more attention. Okay. So if something slips through the cracks, like they've got it as a backup, like a especially net. in the world of digital in yeah. the world of TikTok, in the world of YouTube shorts right. and all that, yep. they're collecting a lot of that stuff. Gotcha, uh, right. they're, they're mostly doing that. Whereas like, that's just so much stuff. And mm -hmm. especially if you're only making songs that are like not being written for Britney Spears or like mm -hmm. Beyonce or something. And like, you are a person who's making independent music for you. And like, it may play on some radio stations. You might go on like smaller tours with it, whatever else, like that's someone that's still gonna, uh, like yeah. you you pay them a one time fee and they they uh, okay, was, search a little harder. I was gonna ask you. that too if it's just a one time or monthly, which one time it's is... a quarter. Yeah, it, or like you pay once. Um, and and that's no shade to ask or BMI either. It's it's like, but that's like fundamentally the idea behind it is like, it's for what they cannot or do yeah, not right. see. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's so this, much. These stuff people out there. are searching again. It's Sweet. like they're doing it again. Uh, yeah, so but, that's a good thing to have yeah, on top of yeah, BMI or sure. ASCAP. For okay. sure, it's the same as signing a publishing deal uh, in a lot of ways, but those publishing deals will also get you into rooms with more people. Mm. Like a publishing deal by nature is typically so that they can like, they'll give you an advance uh, a sum of money sure, that okay. you have to earn back and that's kind of yeah, what you're living off of for the contract scary. term. Yep. And then they are tasked with finding people for you to write with and getting you in sessions that will hopefully 
create songs that make you earn that money back. Sure. Um, gotcha. Yeah. And as a songwriter, like if you're um, just, it can, can it look like basically however you want to, whether it's just sitting down in a room with a pad and paper and a guitar with another person, or um, you're actually in the studio, like recording as you're writing. It can definitely be either for you sure. Know, okay. It can be either. Like gotcha. if we sat down <laughs> today and you were playing guitar and we were like shooting lyrics back and forth or something, that would be a co-write. Sure. That's, right. that's just like what yep. that is. And then like when, when it's done, it's like if the artist decides like whoever is the artist in that circle, you know, like it, you could be in a room with three songwriters who all want to pitch it to someone else. Someone could be the artist in that room. Someone mm -hmm. could be an artist in that room. And if the song fits right, maybe it goes to them. Right. right. Um, a lot of it's more, based around just vibe right. and feel and like does just that song make sense be, for you, you know? or for this person or should we try to get this in the hands of someone that yeah it makes sense for which is um, nice you just talk about money afterwards because it yeah. can be a, a real yeah vibe yeah i mean killer. it's definitely <laughs> it's really difficult to to write with someone when you're focused on money yep. like it's like it's really hard because yeah i mean also, what did you contribute is a factor. Like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, if you are the sole lyricist or, like, melody person or sole producer on a track or if you're doing a mix of all of those things or if you're the person sitting in the back of the room who said, what if you took out the and in that line and you left it without the word and? Every single one of those people deserves a cut of the money. Right. And how much that is is to be determined but you don't want the person who said and or the person that did the bulk of it to be like halfway through i need 75 percent of this or we're not releasing this song right um because that just kills anything Jesus. at all yeah. like like that's just it's over then right um have you run into people in the music industry who kind of have that mentality or I feel like I, I don't think I have, you know, like, I think, I think like those people exist. And I think that the longer I do this, uh, the more likely it may be in a way. Uh -huh. Um, but also like, I feel yeah, like if I mean, that happens one time, it's like, okay, well then I'm not working with you anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's about, like your boundaries too you know it's uh, oh hey that didn't really work out like we can just try there's a lot of people who write a lot of songs like mm -hmm. and it doesn't really uh you don't need to work well with everyone ever yeah. you can you can not <laughs> yeah. that that is just an, a choice that right. you make like it's it's how much you want something or how much you feel like you can put up with and right. when, when that stops you just you should assess that for you yeah and normally do you think it's just all who you know as far as like if someone just randomly shoots you a, a dm or maybe someone that you've known for a while they're like hey i um i really want to work with you on like writing a song or maybe you would reach out to them it can or... go a bunch of directions i yeah. mean i i really i really am a <coughs> proponent of like um, we're working on a project for Honey Creek right now and like pretty much everyone involved with the project were people that I like reached out to who I thought were just impossible. Like mm -hmm. I, like going in, I knew I was such a big fan of their music and what they do that I, I just genuinely didn't even think it was an option wow. to work with them. But I reached out and they were all really receptive wow. and that's not an every time thing, but it's, it's a thing that happens, you know, this is yeah. for a lot of people, regardless of level, we're all just trying to make cool stuff. Right. And right. we're all also probably in a lot of ways trying to figure out if we can make it our jobs. And, right. and that's something that like, it's really nice when, uh, when you make new stuff and new friends and new yeah, connections. Totally. I was just talking about everybody's down bug moment about that too because they just played a show with Hecra yeah which I don't know Hecra but they're telling me that their Aiden had been a huge fan for the longest time yeah. and now they're uh 
potentially going on tour with them yeah like kind yeah, of thing yeah. and like spring and, <laughs> leak um, crazy, crazy yeah i mean that was the glitch gum tour for me was i was i'm such a still a uh, big glitch gum fan and okay. uh i sort of discovered luke's music in the pandemic and uh that's i think when a lot of people discovered like his music and that genre of music Sick. that like hyper pop glitch sure, type yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. um and i just like i remember it coming up when we were trying to play in nashville we were trying to look for local support and glitch gum came up as an option and my full response was there's no fucking way that he'd ever want to play a tour or a show with us like like i wow. just don't believe that that could happen that's like a huge artist that's like someone yeah. that is someone who i just imagined would want nothing to do yeah with with what we were doing not because they were like going to be mean about it or anything but just because they were like hey like i'm a successful person like songwriter like doing this and i don't have time to like commit to that but completely the opposite glitch was wow. incredible to tour with uh it was his first tour like wow. it was like super fun uh we like made some stuff and like we're homies that's my friend wow. you know that's like so that's sick. like for sure like i yeah. feel like i can text him <laughs> about whatever and that's awesome you know so did you did that stem from because it's i feel like at first it can always look like oh they're so unreachable but do you just in your experience, do you just shoot them a DM or email? I think email. It sounds yeah. More. It's it depends. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Like, it it just makes sense to try. Yeah. If right. it doesn't, <laughs> if it doesn't work, like whether it's an email or a DM or whatever, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. You can always try again. Like, right. if they said no once, like, or if they didn't see it the first time, maybe they'll say yes later. Like, right. Got on maybe radar, in, you know? maybe in five years, like they'll yeah. they'll see like that DM or something and be like, "Holy shit!" Like right. I could have right. worked with Social Sig <laughs> on a song like right. like five years ago and I missed it. Like, right. whoa, you know that that is a real option. And then uh, like five years down the road. We'll be all hanging out and be like, yeah, I DM'd you and then look it up. <laughs> you and... you like call them out? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I I don't know. I'm going to send Jason Raz like 14 DMs and just see if he ever... Uh, what happens. That's yeah. like a person that I want to meet and have it go horribly wrong. <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah. He, <laughs> I don't even know what he. I just know his uh the big popular ones. Yeah, uh, just I'm Jason yours. Mraz, uh, Honey Creek tour. Each collab, baby. Let's, <laughs> collab. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, uh, probably wrap this up soon. Is there anything uh you wanted to mention or plug? Uh, or please talk listen about? to Self Preservation by Honey Creek. That's the new record. It's good, I think. Uh, Fuck yeah. Yeah, I don't I know. I haven't listened to it yet, so what I don't have to put it in my my september what? playlist i'm, I'm, not, I'm a busy do. guy <laughs> yeah please listen to it just listening to like dance music all day just like keeping me go like with coffee pumping <laughs> and that, like, oh, that was my morning are you a, are you a awesome. techno head are you not you necessarily okay. like i listen to pretty a little bit of everything like i put together just like a like a monthly playlist of just like random stuff i come across so yeah. it's like anywhere from country to techno to um jazz or classic like whatever it is but um usually in the mornings i like to listen to just like nice like i don't know just kind of good dance music with like very <laughs> minimal <laughs> yeah it's a horrible <laughs> example horrible <laughs> example but just something to keep the it just flowing keep and grooving yeah. yeah yeah don't That's have to think fair. about too much but just like Keeping the vibe, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're. That yeah. that makes sense. You're a big so, vibe connoisseur in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Just keep the keep the. I don't know. It, it helps me wake up too. That's I guess. I am. A, I am also a, a techno fan. Hell yeah! Any artists that you uh, listen to lately, or that you'd like, just in general? Yeah. Um. Always looking for good. So music. many, so many. I don't know. Yeah. I I'm one of those people that like I listen to what feels like an earth shatteringly large amount of music. Like I, I think like between my job and then also just like my personal listening, I probably listen to like, like 30 new artists a week. And then oh, also shit, like right. listen to whatever new stuff <clears throat> comes out. And then also yeah. sometimes I'll get really hooked on a record. I really liked the new, uh, I've been really hooked on and going back to the new fireworks record. Um, 
that one's really good higher lonely power that's oh, what that sure. one's called yeah um, Dude, you've mentioned so many bands that i've never heard before <laughs> so i have to like listen back to this podcast yeah, too. And listen yeah to fireworks it. higher lonely power for sure uh i think it's han irl h-a-n dot i-r-l and then there's a little like heart emoticon thing like sure. a like a less than three yeah uh her and their yeah. I don't know. I don't actually know anything about the artist. Um, yeah. But I, I, that's a I, sick artist name. Yeah, it's I, sick. IRL it's super heart. sick. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know anything about them other than I heard this new EP that they put out. It's like three songs, and it's been on constant repeat. It's oh, so good. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'll have to note that for sure. Yeah. Because I love like a good three song like. Yeah. Mm, just a sampler. Ten of, minute. Like, and that's exactly mm. how it worked for me. I heard the first song and then I listened to the other two and I was like, wow, I, I found a new artist I actually really love. Sick. Like this is it's all you need. super sick. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. All right. Anything else though? That's Before? it. That's what I got. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> this was very fun. And uh, listen to Honey Creek and uh, keep in touch with Cactus Club and uh, all good feature stuff. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. If you did, thanks so, for listening. To I'm the horrible at wrapping these podcast. up. <laughs> this has been Parker and yes. the Social Sig Podcast. See you and next this, time. Yes, see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>